Hi, and welcome to the channel. I'm Sean, and uh, today we are going to go through the recently announced Lightroom 5 Beta. Um, this just I just got this beta release, and I've been messing around with it and testing it enough to do this tutorial. So I'm still finding out things myself, but I have been messing with it, and I'm liking what I see so far. There's a lot of uh, changes from Lightroom 4. Some small, some big. So, uh, due to the time of this video, I'm going to narrow it down to three major new features. And that is the upright lens correction feature, the advanced healing brush feature, and the radial filter. So we'll quickly go through each one, um, not in, in a, you know, a large amount of detail, but just to get you an idea. And then you could try the beta eventually yourself and try out these new features, but I like them. So, what's what are the small tweaks? Well, some of the small tweaks are that I've noticed is faster rendering, faster loading times. As you can see, when I click on these images that I added to my quick collection, they load pretty fast. Um, if you remember before, that loading bar was was there for quite a while, and the reason is is from what I've read on the internet and doing some research is I found out that it's loading a lot less in the background and it's only loading panels that it needs that or that you have open it's not loading everything and half the stuff that you don't even use so I think that's a it may be a small tweak you know but I think in ways it's it's big it will definitely save your workflow time um there's a different new processing now with with your images um you know, a, a lot has been added to the um, to, to the modules, such as the dis, uh, slideshow module. There is now you can integrate pictures with videos with transitions. So that's that's cool. You know, that's a lot of nice uh, finishing touches. So we're gonna go into the first um, new advanced feature, and that's the new advanced healing brush for cloning and healing. In the past. You know, when you switch through Lightroom and Photoshop, you'll what I do with my daily workflow is is I'll start my Lightroom experience, and then I'll gradually finish the heavy duty work in Photoshop. So I'll import from Lightroom to CS6, especially for cloning and for healing, especially with Photoshop's Content Aware Fill. It's very advanced. Well. In just the past hour of messing with Lightroom 5 Beta, I've noticed significant um, improvements and upgrades to the healing brush. Before, the healing brush was a basic, pretty much standard size brush. You really couldn't do a lot of detail. You couldn't really get too much involved with it. Simple spots here and there, done. Do the rest in Photoshop. I've This is a really big improvement. I've, I see a, a lot now. And uh, probably going to be doing a lot more of my... Um, editing now with Lightroom 5 when the final retail release comes out. So I'd like to show you some of that. So we'll start off with this image that I took in Half Moon K Bahamas on a cruise ship uh, vacation we went on this past February. This was actually Valentine's Day. And we're going to go to the um, second option here in the develop module. We're going to do healing brush and then we have clone and heal. We're going to put it on heal we're gonna mess with our scrubby slider here for the size we could leave the opacity at a hundred okay that's all taste that you could change yourself when you mess with these features and we're gonna hold the uh, left mouse button down and we're gonna clone this parachute sailor out of here this guy parachuting we're gonna take the wire out and after I paint the entire area that I want to clone out we release the mouse button and it's gone but now let's get a little bit advanced here. If we hit the H key on the keyboard, it will toggle where the source came. So kind of think of it like Content Aware Fill. How does it know, you know, where to fill him in? Well, it's actually showing you. Now this is automatically where Lightroom said, well, let's pull this information, this data from this area. And it's not always going to happen like that. It's not always going to be that um, advanced and that accurate. So it may pull it out from a whole different area of the photo that you don't want. So you can actually have control now of where it's pulling that information from. And as you can see, if we drag it onto the water here, we can see the water 
where the parachute sailor was. We can put it on the sky, we can put it on the boat, and as you can see, it's actually pulling that information in place of it. But it was a good job where it did, so we're going to leave it there. But that is advanced healing brushes. You can also um, hold the shift key down, and it will go in a straight line, and then we can release it. And we, same thing with the with the H key. It'll toggle, you know, where we get the information from. You can manipulate that line, that path. So that's all good. Um, we're gonna try it again here. See, we're gonna paint this guy out. Again, we're gonna take this. We're gonna move it. And as you can see, depending on where we're getting our source information from is where it's pulling it from and I mean I you know I could go into detail here and fix up all this but in the sake of time we're, you know we're just going through it pretty quick but you know you could go crazy now here's another something that's pretty interesting in the develop module let's go to this image here of my dad snorkeling now let's talk about spot healing and, and and lens um, debris, stuff on your sensor. Stuff that you may not even know it's there, stuff that you may not even see uh, to the naked eye pretty much. Well watch this. When I pull when I put the option down here it says visualize spots and then it has a slider. If we check that, look at this. This is interesting. So depending on the clarity and the contrast, we could go up and down, but I noticed here, look at all this, stuff that's, you know, stuff that's not supposed to be there now naturally in this instance it's picking up the clouds okay but let's just say we don't want them in there notice it is showing through well we're already on the healing brush so let's see but you know this is gonna this ain't the really the best example but you know just think of the possibilities how useful this would be especially if if you took an image, you know, of a sky, let's just say, and you had all that lens lens debris and um sensor dust, you wouldn't see it. Well this will actually spot it for you. I'm gonna to toggle off this and there you go. Now look at that. Already, compared to the way it was, the sky is so much better and clearer now. We may not have really noticed it, but this is just an example. There there is gonna be cases where you're gonna notice that and this uh, visualized spots is going to come in very handy. Okay, so let's go to the second part of our tutorial. We have this building here. Well, now we have this new feature under lens correction called upright. We're going to scroll down. Here's lens correction. So we're going to go into the basic panel. And you notice here we have options now. We have enabled profile corrections we're gonna check that remove chromatic aberrations we're gonna check that but then notice here under we have upright okay we have off auto level vertical full they're very involved features this can really help you with um, with buildings with crooked photos with barrel distortion stuff that you may not even notice and then when you apply these effects I was doing it on some buildings it's it's very um, big changes here um, now what we can do is to actually see how this is working we can go to view and we can go to loop overlay and we could do show and what that does is as you can see it puts a grid on our image so let's try one of these. Let's try the level option. So we're going to click level. Now look at that. Now I'm going to turn it off. Okay. You know, in this instance, subtle changes, but look how much better. Look how much straight and, and more natural looking. Okay. Let's go jump to a different image. Let's try another option. We did level. So we got our grid on. Okay. We got our stuff checked. Let's try vertical. Now naturally in a lot of cases like this you're going to have a lot of cropping to do. But it does fix the image. But I think in this case we're going to try, we're going to go back to off and we're going to try auto. Let's see what auto does. I like that. I'm pretty happy with those results. Let's do that off again. 
Let's try auto. I'm liking that. I can see a lot of potential and a lot of time saving uh, with this feature as opposed to doing the regular lens correction in Photoshop. Auto's not always going to work with every image, but you do have an assortment of an array of options here. We have level, we have vertical, we have full. Let's try full. So in this case, that's not going to work, but we'll go back to auto. So off, auto. I like that. And this is just an hour of messing with, with um, upright. So just imagine, you know, the more images I pull in, uh, the more examples that I, I mess around with, this is going to become very handy and uh, really save a lot of time, I believe. So let's go back now uh, to this image. Let's go to this image here. Okay, we could take the um, view off here, the grid. We'll go to over loop overlay. We'll, we'll uncheck show because we don't need that now in this example. And I want to quickly go through the radial filter. And I don't want to just subject, you know, make the radial filter like it's just about vignettes. But I do add and apply a lot of vignettes to my images. So let's just for this example, let's talk about vignettes. I was messing with it today. And um, I know it's capable of so much more because now it carries a lot of your adjustments over. But let's just say we make an, a little ellipse here. Let's see. And I'm going to move this. Uh, you can already see the potential it could have, especially for vignettes. Look how dramatic that is. We even have a feather here. Okay. Look at that. Now look at this. You still have all your adjustment sliders here to make your adjustments and your changes. Look at this. I mean, I already was messing with this for like 20, 25 minutes, and I got so many creative um, options here. And and every time I did it, I came out with a different result. So I, th I think pretty much this is, um, you know, messing around with it, trying different sliders. There's really no wrong way to do it. It depends on what you're out you know your final product is gonna look like I could see this definitely being a potential for a lot of things I know it's not just for vignettes but for the sake of the time for this video I think um, it's it's a pretty cool way to show off the radio filter and I do use a lot of vignettes so this is definitely gonna come in handy for me and I like the control that you have I mean look just by going through some of these sliders you know what we can change you can also invert it too and do what's inside of the ellipse you know you could change the shape of it you could move it um, you could change your exposure you could change the contrast look at that I mean it's it's endless really you know we can move it look at that you know your typical basic vignette but look at this if you just wanted to highlight a certain area of an image that's the radial filter so I'm definitely going to be messing around with that. Look, you can mess around with the filter more. You can make it look more natural. So the radial filter. So we went through three of the new features, three of the bigger features. We went through the advanced healing brush. We went through some of the uh, options in the radial filter. And I showed you the upright uh, scaling in lens correction. I think this is going to be a really good release by the time it comes out. I will be messing around with this beta a lot more. I might do an update video. And um, that's pretty much it for now. So check out the Lightroom 5 beta if you haven't already. And tell me what you think. And mess around with it. And try all these options and features out. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.